welcome back to Site Tech Intermountain Earthworks training videos. In this video today, I'm going to show you how to use your Earthworks excavators to use measure mode and depth and slope to build layback slopes to certain angles or degrees without having to get out and actually use a tape measure and a level. What I've got here is a hole that I've dug to kind of represent anything that you may have on your job site between spot footings, holes that you're digging for uh, trench pipes, boxes, whatever it may be. And this can even work if you had like a trench that was really deep that you wanted to lay back at a certain slope. Whatever soils you may have, you may have to lay back a, a trench or a footing like this to a, a one to one, one and a half to one, two to one, whatever it is. Um, the traditional way, even the way I used to do it before Earthworks is I'd end up digging down if I didn't have it modeled in and I'd then eyeball a slope. I'd get out with a tape measure and a level and measure in my one and one to ones or one and a half to ones. But now you can, from inside the machine, use the measure mode or depth and slope to be able to inside the cab, check these slopes, lay them back, figure it out exactly where it is. Now I know that traditionally, if you had you know a dig where you actually put your paint marks off to the side here, let's say I'm eight feet deep or nine feet deep, a one to one would be eight feet for eight feet. Uh, nine foot deep would be nine foot. I know that you can pre-paint all this. I'm just trying to show you how you can actually use the in-cab feature to do all that without having to get back out and keep checking it or have a guy on the ground checking it. So let's go ahead and do it real quick. All right, so if I'm in the machine, I've dug the footings out. I didn't have a model, but I have my 3D system here. I have finished floor because that's what I have in this scenario is I have a model for what we're doing out here for the buildings, the pop-up building, I have where my loading dock is, all that. If I just didn't have a footing model, this is just to show you guys that don't have it, but you have the excavator, you have these two modes in there that are available. The measure mode is, is, is only in excavators, but depth and slope is in any of them. So at this point, now that I've actually dug down, let me show you both ways. So if I wanted to lay out this slope to my left side right here at a one-to-one, -one, what I can do is put my teeth down at the very bottom right here, and I can go into the gear with the tablet and I can make sure that my units are on ratio. So if I've got ratio for B and C right there, but it's not, so it's not in slope, I can go to the shovel with the gear at the bottom right and I can go down to what's called measure mode. So in measure mode, I can pick the left side of my tip right there of my bucket, left tooth, and I can set at the bottom and I can do original, which creates a point to the bottom. And then I can drag my bucket up into the same spot, but to the side, and it'll tell me exactly how deep I am from the existing conditions. So the existing ground is about six and a half, 680, almost seven feet down. But if I wanted to know exactly where a one-to-one -one is just from inside the cab, I can just run over and tell this ratio goes to just a one-to-one. -one. So we all know that if I'm six feet up, a one-to-one -one would be six feet over. So just using these two different numbers here, the very first one that I could go to is how far over I am. So there's a 640 and there's a six foot over from my original point and there's my one, almost one-to-one -one right there. So it's just sitting inside the cab, I can run over until I hit that one-to-one -one ratio. So right there, I could mark it and say, hey, that's my spot, my spot just by using measure mode. I could do the same thing on the right side. I could set my teeth down here at the bottom, switch my tip to the right side, hit original, and do the same thing, run over. It's about seven foot on this side. So if I knew that I was going over about seven foot on the tape measure part of it, I'd know either based on that number or the ratio right there that I'm actually at that point and I can mark it. So then I could go ahead and start digging everything in and actually have a, a starting point. But the trick with that measure mode doing that is I'm still limited to just kind of eyeballing it. All I have is actual top of slope. Here's the other cool trick is to use your depth and slope. If you go to your shovel with the gear, which is your job setup, and change it off of design mode and change this to depth and slope, you can still use the line work in the background or you can just completely cut it away. But I'm going to leave the line work there for the job site and hit apply. Now, if I'm squared up with the trench like I am or the footing, I, it's going to prompt me to do a bench heading. So if I hit the bench heading, it aligns me with it. Then what I can do is I can lay out these slopes to the sides, and I can lay the slopes out in front of me. And where that is, is at the very top of your screen, you've got a level for a main fall and a level sideways. So if I wanted to do this left side right now, and I wanted to actually build in a slope in my depth and slope, 
I'm going to set my teeth right down at the bottom, which I've got there, my left hip on the left side, and I'm going to actually hit my bench elevation. If I change my screens here to where I've got cross section and then I've got profile in front of me, if I hit my bench elevation and bench out zero on the left side right there, I can go to my sideways cross section right here, target cross slope, and I could type in a one to one. And then right here, you got to pay attention to which way it's going. You don't want it to go off the right side of the bucket if I'm doing here. So I'm going to change it to a negative, which will put a one-to-one -one slope right off the left side. And it's going to save these so you can switch from side to side. So now you can see I've actually got a design slope right there. So if I run my bucket up to about that same spot that I had mar marked before, you can see off my left side, it's giving me an actual slope that I can cut to, and it's in the exact same spot because it's one-to-one. -one. If I wanted to check that off the right side now, I don't have to go through the whole process. I'm going to just change my focus point to the right side, rebench an elevation off my right side, but now I'm going to just go in here and change this to a positive number instead of a negative. And now off my right side, I'm zeroed on the bottom on the right side. I can run my bucket up to about that same spot that I had marked before. And you can see that on my right side, it's going to give me an actual slope where I can actually dig to. And I can follow that all the way back along the side of the machine because I had a bench heading when the machine was facing straight forward. So now I have a nice line. So once I'm done with the slight slopes to the side, at least getting this set up, I can actually put my bucket teeth right out at the very front of my trench right there or footings, whatever I'm digging. As soon as I set down in front right there, I'm going to hit my bench elevation again one more time. And then at the top left here, you can touch and hold on this one. And this is your target main fall. So straight out in front of me, I can tap right here and put a one to one out in front of me, positive up in front of me, negative behind. So straight out in front of me like that. Now I can go back to my main screen right here. So now what I can do is straight out in front of me, use my other screen and reach out in front of me until I know exactly where I hit that slope. So as soon as I go all the way to there, there's where I start my one-to-one -one slope there. Here's the next trick. If I put my bucket up in the far corner of this, this footing right here, and I bench out a new elevation in the far corner, what I can do is turn on both cross-section and main fall. So I can tap my main fall on in front of me, come in here and actually make a memory. So I could come in here and create an actual memory that's a one-to-one -one out in front of me. Save that, go ahead and come out of there. Then from my cross section to the right side, I can actually touch and hold on that and put a black box, go to the black box and come in here and put a memory in here for a one-to-one -one, and it's actually gonna save these. So that what I'm gonna save to the right. Then what I can do is go ahead and put my bucket in the front, the top corner up here on the left side and I can actually go in here and make a memory for the slope to a one-to-one. -one. So now that I've got that established, I can reach out here and actually start cutting down my slope. Once you've established a couple slopes, you can come back here and keep checking with a bench elevation. And then for your main fall, you can turn your slope on in front of you and you're good at the bottom. You can drag up to the very top right there and see if you've hit the mark. So boom, right there. I know that I'm perfect on that one. So I've got a true one-to-one -one out in front of me. Now let's check the, to the side right here. I can go ahead and put my bucket tip on the left. I can bench an elevation using depth and slope. So my left tooth is, tooth is zeroed out. And then I can turn on a one-to-one -one slope to my left side. If it's on the wrong angle, just go ahead and put it to positive or negative. Now that I drag up to the very top, right there at the top of my slope, I know that's a true one-to-one. -one. So we're good to go with depth and slope. The other way to do that would to go back to that measure mode. So shovel with the gear. Measure mode, I'm on my left hip. I hit original at the very bottom. And if I drag up to the very top of what I've cut right there and put my tooth right there, 
there's a true one to one right there off to the left. It's about a 650. So you can do the measure mode out in front of you also. So if I do measure mode there, hit original, and then drag straight out in front of me to the very top, I can do the same thing to get a one-to-one -one slope. Hopefully this video helps on understanding how you can use depth and slope and measure mode for your excavators to cut in slopes and know what they are from sitting inside the machine and not having to eyeball them like this and then get out and actually check it with a tape measure level or have a guy on the ground in an unsafe condition. So thanks for watching from Site Tech Intermountain.